Welcome to Being a Successful Leader with Carl Welty. Carl is a leadership pioneer with years of challenging leadership and consulting experience. Here's Carl with some valuable insights, practical and proven methods for being a successful leader. Greetings, Carl Welty here, your host for the podcast series, Being a Successful Leader. The uh, intent of the uh, series is to provide you with valuable insights and practical and proven know-how uh, to be a successful leader. Not that you're not already, but to uh, help you be even more effective. Uh, the net upshot is to gain great, greater clarity, confidence, and skill for you uh, to move things forward as a leader and uh, be proud of it. Three imperatives I have in the 26 episodes revolve around these three imperatives. Number one imperative for a successful leader is to uh, be a skillful, self-aware leader. The second imperative is having and formulating a uh, and executing a sound strategy. And the third is then build a culture of commitment to implement that sound strategy. Skillful, self-aware leader, uh, sound strategy, and culture of commitment. Uh, we uh, have uh, completed the episodes on the first two, and we're in the middle, if you will, on the culture of commitment episode. Each episode runs... 15 to 30 minutes uh, a week apart. Now, you can catch up on past episodes by going to my website, wealthy.com, uh, going scrolling over to the leadership resources section, and then going down and clicking on the icon for the uh, for the podcast. And you'll see the past episodes in there to catch up on them or review them if you care to do so. Also, you see my books there, and the book that uh, relates to our current uh, uh, focus is the book called Building Commitment. And uh, it will add greatly to your understanding and appreciation and use of this uh, information uh, that we're talking about in this particular area of focus to grab a copy of that book. Uh, all you do is uh, click on that and then take you right to the uh, ordering source, uh, Barnes & Noble or, or uh, Amazon or the, uh, the uh, publisher. Okay, uh, so today what we want to do is, is to take a look at uh, where we've been is to uh, exploring the uh, uh, business reasons and the some of the motivational background and that sort of thing that helps you understand and appreciate where we're going to go with my four building blocks in building a culture of commitment. And today we're going to dive into the first building block, and that's the selection building block, which is a logical place to start, right, in terms of uh, getting the, the key ingredients going for you and getting a, a staff in uh, your various positions that uh, it gives you the wherewithal to develop this culture of commitment. So the intent here will be to focus mainly on the preparing and conducting an effective selection interview. Very, very important. And many of us leaders and managers, uh, that's not one of our strong suits. So we're going to give you a, a very potent and unique process here today to allow you to uh, to. Uh, conduct, prepare for, and conduct the effective uh, selection interviews. Uh, as you already know, I consider formulating, executing a sound strategy, and then building a culture of commitment as the two key leadership imperatives. But in terms of your role as a leader manager, I would put staffing function up there as a management function that is uh, critical to your success as a, a leader manager, the manager part of it. And staffing is all about choosing and equipping people to effectively perform the work necessary to achieve desired results. And today we're going to talk about the choosing part of that. And following building blocks, we'll talk about the equipping part. Now, the objective of the selection process, uh, be, be the external or internal, in other words, external hires or internal placements, the objective is still the same. You want to assure a good position and cultural fit between the requirements of the position and the qualifications of the folks you're looking at. Uh, and that can include the future as well as the immediate opportunity if you're looking to the future for this position. Now, it's it's critical because a poor job fit, what, what you want to do is to have the outer ring, if you can picture two rings, if the outer ring of the position a little bit bigger than the individual so the individual can come with their running shoes on and and grow and have that outer ring that they're searching for. So a good job fit is that the outer ring is a little bit bigger, and hopefully as they grow, you can keep that outer ring, outer ring a little bit bigger uh, for them. 
and maybe eventually then they go to another position with a new set of outer rings. Uh, so what you don't want is mismatches. A mismatch is where the outer ring of the position is way too big for the individual, and they stumble and and get frustrated, and they're they're overwhelmed, and you don't want that. On the other hand, you don't want the converse of that, whereby the uh, the individual is too big, the individual way bigger than the than the ring of the position, and so they're they they'll get bored right away and apathy, and probably want your position. <laughs> Okay, so we want to avoid those. Now, some common selection problems for the leader manager, hiring managers, is that many times they don't fully appreciate the importance of this management activity of selecting the right people. They're uncomfortable with it and may lack the uh, selection interviewing skills. Uh, we're working on that here. You shouldn't have that that issue uh, if you understand and begin to apply these uh, practices and processes we're talking about. Some common problems uh, that interviewers uh, have, they're not, know, they're not knowing what they're looking for. They're hiring in their own image, uh, not being organized, a lack of adequate preparation, maybe jumping to conclusions, uh, talking too much, inability to obtain any relevant information that is not already on the resume or the application, failure to control the interview, and not going through a logical decision-making process after completing the interviews. We'll take care of all that today. And again, uh, consult the book, Building Commitment, because there's a lot more detail in there and will really equip you to succeed. Again, our goal is to provide you with this unique and powerful process to have you be comfortable and confident and competent in uh, in conducting and preparing for and conducting successful uh, selection interviews. Um, now, I call this a targeted selection process because you really want to key in on what it takes to be successful in opportunity or position that you're trying to fill. And then secondly, get a good assessment of the various candidates' relevant qualifications, including, by the way, their patterns of thinking, feeling, and behavior. And the more professional and uh, uh, higher up in the organization the position you're seeking to fill, the more important it is to develop that beyond just knowledge and skills, but the patterns of uh, behavior and feelings and, and thinking. Now, this, there I have several steps here I'll briefly review in a selection process, and then we'll go through them one at a time. Develop a position profile. We'll talk about that in a second. Then you want to use that to then develop your selection criteria. And then you're going to source your candidates. Maybe you did already, but you maybe source a little bit more, whether your sources are internal, external, to get the uh, people to interview. Then you prepare an interview guide. Again, we'll go through all this. You then conduct the interviews using the interview guide, and then finally make a decision. So let's go through these uh, six steps. Number one, uh, develop a position profile. Now, what is that? Uh, it, it's a sketch. It's a one-page sketch of the primary components, if you will, of the opportunity, the position that you're wanting to fill here. And the uh, position profile then sets the stage for you to uh, then develop your selection uh, criteria. The components of a position profile against this one-page sketch is uh, the following uh, uh, five pieces. What's the purpose of the role of this position? A uh, one-sentence, uh, powerfully stated uh, sentence a statement of uh, why the position exists the second is the key result areas these are the the work of the position we talked about in earlier episodes the work of the organization leadership management and technical work so i combine leadership and uh, management uh, as you list your key res result area here uh, and, and as we dist distinguished in the past they're really different but for the purposes of, of what we're talking about here i lump them together so you'll have your leadership management key result areas, and then your technical work area or areas. You may uh, subdivide it into s several pieces in your technical work. So you have your purpose, your key result areas, and then the tasks. What is this person in this position personally you want them to do? In other words, it's especially important with leadership positions because remember we talk about accountability is the overall uh, obligation to achieve results. And so they may not actually perform a lot of the responsibilities of the position, but they're still accountable. So, but what, what what are those responsibilities you want them personally to perform? 
And then the last two uh, key opportunities are challenges. In other words, as they come with their running shoes on, what what faces them? What what what, what do you want them to uh, uh, really uh, focus on and, and achieve in the, in the short term and the long term? These will be the goals when you guys start working together. And the last one is the fit with the organizational culture. This is important too. The organizational culture being you, your team, the rest of your team, and the organization as a whole. So purpose, key result areas, tasks, key opportunities or challenges, and organizational culture. Okay, so then you use your position profile to develop your selection criteria. I have two tiers here. Uh, general qualifications and something they call position success factors. The general qualifications, the first tier, are things that are important, they're objective, they're measurable. These are the musts. I call the general qualifications the musts, and the wants are the position success factors. The musts are the resume factors. These are things like education, experience, licenses, certifications, uh, and registrations. And the advantage of the general qualifications is that you're getting the word out uh, by thinking this through and you're beginning your internal and external notification, postings, advertising, word of mouth, and your initial screening are people who do that for you. But you don't, and this is critical, you don't make your decision with the selection. You don't make your selection on the general qualifications. You need to go deeper than that. And to do that, we need to talk about Position success factors. This is my label for the critical few attributes needed for a person to be successful in your opportunity that you have. Um, And there's different types of uh, position success factors. Think of concentric circles here. And the outer circle, let's have have three. The outer circle is knowledge and skills. Now, that's the easiest to assess, the knowledge and skills that are needed to be successful in this position. Uh, Then the... Next inner circle is what I'd call mental models, and in the, and the center would be what I call core. Now, you'll recall in in earlier episodes, we talked about mental models and core when we talked about uh, discovering the dimensions of the inner you, which is the core is the, your natural abilities and skills, traits, that sort of thing. Uh, that's the core, and the mental models is the, are the assumptions and beliefs uh, that you have. Um, and those become important, again, for your more prof- professional positions and your positions that have heavy leadership management responsibilities. All right. Now, uh, in terms of identifying position success factors, the first three here categories uh, you'd want for any any position, uh, especially a leadership management position, you'd want to have the leadership management key result area. Uh, and then you'd have technical work, and then you have personal characteristics. Those are my three. Now, the first one, leadership management, you wouldn't include if the role did not include a leadership part to it, okay? You did have, usually have technical work and personal characteristics. Now, you can break up the leadership and management and technical work into logical subdivisions if that seems to be appropriate, or you can lump it all together, just a leadership and management key result area and a technical work key result area. But if you thought it uh, propitious to break it down, for example, in leadership management, let's say that project management was a real biggie for this position, then you'd want project management as a key result area. Or if managing uncertainties may be a a really critical uh, aspect, you want to maybe have that as a key result area also. The same would apply to technical work, lump it all together and maybe or break it down into logical components. Again, you don't want a whole slug of these things, just a critical few that's going to make a difference. And then I would add to the, the these two, leadership and management and technical work, personal characteristics. These are the core and mental models, what we just talked about, the the second and the, the concentric circles and the second and core ring of the concentric circle with the knowledge and skill being on the outside. Now, there may be some additional, or there should be some additional considerations here for uh, personal success factors. One would be the cultural fit, what we talked about in the position profile. So you want to maybe list that as a as another uh, success factor. And then another one is motivation or passion. This becomes important. This is the fire in the belly. To what degree is this person? Uh, can you assess the the fire in the belly for this opportunity that you have? 
And the other one, which is not as always a consideration, would be potential. Are you looking beyond just this media position and the person maybe go into uh, even heavier responsibilities and accountabilities with you? So those are the categories, if you will. Three that I would say are two of the three anyway. Leadership management depends if it's a leadership role, technical work and personal characteristics, and then additional considerations are cultural fit, motivation, and potential. Now, what you want to do, especially if you're going to subdivide, share kind of the uh, uh, selection process here, is that the the personal success factors work really well to divide up the work, the interviews, and so forth. So rather than bore the socks off individuals as they come and you have people that, you know, part of your leadership team perhaps that uh, ask the same questions and so forth and so on, you may want to divvy it up based on on the success factors, then we come back together, uh, have a quality conversation about just what uh, the assessments were with each of the success factors. Makes it a lot easier on the poor candidate too. So that's another advantage of the uh, uh, position success factors. So give that some, give that some thought. Also, and especially important if you're going to share the decision-making process with others to define uh, the, what you mean in working operating definitions for each of these personal success factors. What do you mean by, for example, uh, critical thinking, if that's one, or, or managing uncertainties, if that's another, and maybe give some behavioral examples. So when uh, in your own mind, but especially if you're working with others and making this decision, you kind of have a common focus here. All right, step three are then to be to source candidates, and we won't talk much about that here, but that'll be to me depending on the position you have and the typical routes that you choose and uh, whether it's an internal or external uh, placement or hire that you're going to make, so forth. But you're in great position to paint the picture of what you need uh, by going through what you've already done in, in the uh, position profile and then deriving the success factors from that. So step four out of our six is then prepare an interview guide. Now, this a lot of the stuff we're talking about I, I'm proud of, and I don't think you'll find it elsewhere, maybe bits and pieces, but not like we're describing it here. Now, the interview guide really overcomes a lot of apprehensive feelings and fear that a lot of leader managers have in conducting the selection interview that many, uh, they don't know how about, so they read a book or they, their favorite questions, what do you, where do you see yourself in five years or, or that sort of thing. But you want to do is to tailor your line of inquiry to the success factors. So when the person leaves, you know a lot more about them than when they came in, a lot more than just the resume factors, which is a problem for many interviewers. They don't know any more when the person leaves. They end up talking a lot and so forth and so on. That won't be the case if you follow the process we're talking about here. So the benefits of preparing an interview guide is that you can develop patterns of inquiry and specific questions that make sense in having the true person emerge in your interview so that you really kind of know them. And they're not only their knowledge and skills, but their patterns, as I mentioned earlier, but uh, thinking and feeling and behavior that uh, especially want to get the inner rings of that so, uh, types of uh, selection uh, that we talked about earlier. So uh, develop par- uh, patterns of inquiry and specific questions. Also assure consistency as you're interviewing several people, you know, you want to have some consistency as you go through the interviews and then arrange for a nice balance of structure and flexibility. One of the problems you're going to find is, as you use this interview guide is that in the past, so many managers and maybe yourself uh, found, uh, uh, you know, puzzling what questions to ask and so forth, and you in, end up talking too much. And with the problem you're going to have here, and it's a nice problem, is uh, you're going to be a more of a conductor of the interview and, and decide when to move on and when to go deeper and things of this nature, which is a nice problem to have. And sometimes how are you going to quiet the person down and move on to the next uh, topic you want to discuss, okay? So a good problem to have. I'll take that exchange any time. Now, how to prepare this uh, interview guide? Uh, the first thing you want to do is, is just take a, several pieces of paper and uh, uh, devote a separate page to each of the uh, 
uh, position success factors and start off with the general qualifications page. And here you just maybe scratch some notes before the interview in terms of summarizing the general qualifications or credentials, if you will. This is the uh, the go, no go factor here. Then now you're going to do the interview. So you base the interview on the uh, position success factors. And this would be a good time, as you've already listed them, to to weigh them. The first three, if you will, leadership management, the uh, technical work, and then the uh, personal characteristics. And if you subdivide it, that take a look and see if there's uh, some differentiation there. And if there is, uh, weigh them, whatever scale you care, care to use, low, medium, high, one to five, one to ten, what have you. And this allows you to maybe better sequence your interview guide and put up front maybe the more important success factors so you make sure that you have time to get to them. <clears throat> so then you on top of each page, you have the general qualifications and each of your uh, position success factors. You write down the questions and situations perhaps you want to pose so that the per true person can maybe emerge in your interview. Uh, you don't want a lot of these things, maybe a question or two or a, a situation uh, for each of these pages that you have. And then you're going to use the rest of the page to jot down notes and maybe do your summary after the interview. And uh, you've explained to the candidate the purpose of the interview guide, that you want consistency, you'll be talking to several people, and you want to make sure that you capture the essence of what you're talking about, so you'll be taking notes. And you've got to be skillful in taking these notes. I mean, you don't, want, you don't want verbatim and that sort of thing, but just maybe a little jottings and key phrases and things of that nature that you can use for recall later on. Okay, so I mentioned on top of each page, you're going to have a question or two and maybe a situation to pose. Let me give you an example. Let's take it out of the leadership and management uh, position success factor. Uh, let's Here's an example, of, uh, a question, for example. And you're, you're, you're talking to the candidate. In your leadership role, what do you consider to be the biggest challenge you have? And then for a lot of these, they're follow-on questions. You go deeper and deeper and trying to know the individual and how they think, behave, and feel. Oh, why, did, why do you choose that particular challenge? And then maybe another going deeper. How do you go about constructively addressing this challenge? You're going to find out a lot about them by this line of inquiry. A situation might be, an example of a situation might be, uh, gee, we had a, a rather sticky uh, situation around here about a month ago. Let me describe it to you. And I'd be interested to see how you would go about uh, attacking this uh, issue that we had and resolving it. You can see how powerful this line of inquiry is. Uh, all right. Now, uh, the next uh, piece would be to conduct your interviews. And what you do is you use your interview guide. And then also <clears throat> you maybe make use of additional means for gathering relevant information, references, assignments, uh, assessments, tryouts. And, and, you know, depending on the nature of the position and the higher up the go and the more professional and steeped in leadership management is the more opportunity perhaps and the more you would want to maybe have a little special assignment, something you give them and they phone you back or you have a revisit or they mail it into you or even little tryouts uh, where they, you know, you maybe even pay them for them for a day and try it, try it out. This is important to just uh, not, not make use, use of your full arsenal here. And it's fair to them too. And by the way, in your interview, you want to make sure that you allow opportunity for the candidates to ask you questions. You probably want to start off going through your interview guide so they have a pretty good feel for kind of things you're looking for. But then uh, having that knowledge, uh, what questions do you have of me in terms of this opportunity? And many times the questions they ask you are more informative than the questions you ask them. So always allow for that opportunity for them to ask questions. Okay. <clears throat> now, the final step is to make your decision now, here I recommend decision matrix. You're in good shape to put this little puppy together. Uh, take take a piece of paper on the left-hand side, list your position success factors, okay? And if you have weights, put the a weight column for them. And then your candidates are top, across the top, and you have cells that you have that you'll make little notes as you look at these three, four, five, whatever candidates you have, because this is a selection interview, not a screening interview. 
and then and then you can uh, uh, do your your uh, adding it up, if you will. If you if you weighted these, you have a weight, and then you'd score each each uh, candidate against that weight. You could have a weight, let's say, in my book, I use one to ten, and then you can score each individual based on my uh, individual position success factor on a scale of one to ten, and then add it up. And uh, so that's your that's your nice left brain linear uh, uh, decision making. But I'd like to it, always in, in in the process by what I call integrated thinking. Uh, do a right brain check. Your right brain, of course, is your is your more uh, conceptual, intuitive, creative thinking part of your brain. And so you've done the linear part in very good fashion, hopefully. But what do your gut instincts tell you about this decision that, that you, the rational decision that you l- gain from your decision matrix? Are you comfortable with that? And so you'd want to have a good talk with yourself and um, and others if they're involved in the process. So a right brain check and in your integrated thinking. And the second part is what I call adverse consequences. A second check. Ask yourself questions like, how will this decision hold up over time? Will it be a good selection in the face of changing conditions? Are there any other cr- crucial factors I have overlooked? Okay, so as you can see, very, very thorough process I have here for you. So I hope you will really take the effort to understand it, appreciate it, and use it. Okay, so to summarize, we're giving you a practical proven process to improve your confidence and confidence in conducting selection interviews to assure a really good position and cultural fit. Okay, now next time we're going to go to block, building block number two out of the four, and that's clarity. You've got a person on board now. Now you've got to have shared expectations around the role, responsibilities, and authorities. And just like this time, I give you a very, what I consider, a unique and powerful process to uh, go about preparing and conducting a selection interview. Next time, you're going to get a unique and powerful process on how to develop shared expectations expectation between you and this good hire or our placement that you made okay so stay tuned for that meantime take care of yourself